Most new riders default to the Ninja 300 or the SV650 as the tried and true beginner bike. And while those are awesome options with tons of internet forum and aftermarket support, if you're looking for something a little bit different that's going to help you stand out a bit more, you need to check out these little known bikes that are awesome for beginners. Before getting started, I wanted to shout out this video sponsor, Vincero Watches. You guys have seen me wear watches and commented on them in my previous vlogs, and these guys make some of the best ones. I love their story because they saw an opportunity to make affordable watches for the everyday modern guy, but without the four or five figure price tag that's usually associated with it. They sent over this model for me to try out and I've gotten tons of compliments on it. It really looks like a watch that should cost about 10 times what it actually does. If you're anything like me, a watch really sets apart any look you got going and nothing looks quite as awesome as a well sorted watch and some really sweet street gear on your bike. We've partnered up so click the link below to check them out and see yourself wearing one. The RVF 400. I got the opportunity to ride this little gem of a bike back when I visited Australia last year, and even though I was used to riding an FZ09, a 675R, and even some leader bikes, this little bike never failed to impress me. They were made from 1994 to 1996, which might scare some of you since maintenance is a prime consideration when buying a motorcycle. However, given this bike's age, it's an incredibly simple machine to work on. It's carbureted, no advanced electronics, and it's got this sweet little 399cc V4 that sounds simply Awesome. Check it out. The RV400 is perfect for the guy or girl that wants a proper sport bike ergonomics package but wants to start out with something that's got a lower amount of power that's not going to overwhelm a beginner. With 53 horsepower, it's a punchy little bike, but compared to the 600cc class that has well over 100 horsepower at this point, you'd have to really push it to get into trouble. Good examples can be found for anywhere between four and five thousand dollars since they're not a super sought after classic bike. And while that might sound like a lot of money for a bike that's over 20 years old, I can confirm after riding one that the experience is worth every penny. The other great part about this bike is that it's learner approved in countries with license restrictions, making it an awesome alternative to the common 300 bikes. The RVF is going to get you tons of compliments for its retro vibes, old school features, and incredible engine note, though it might be hard to find given its limited production run. The Cyclone RX3. This one's a bit of an oddball, but if you're not into the whole sport bike thing and want to get into the ADV market on a budget, and since most beginners are typically starting out with that sweet spot of about three and five grand, the RX3 should be high on your list. Unlike the RVF, this bike is currently being manufactured and can be bought brand new for under 4,500 bucks. Now, be advised, while the RX3 looks the part, many reviewers found it wanting when used for serious ADV duties. It's a bike that can be used for ADV, but should you require a little more out of it, it might disappoint. But for the beginner rider who wants something practical to commute with, looks great and is a little different, the Cyclone RX3 might just be the perfect offering. A 250cc single cylinder bike making a humble 26 horsepower powers this diminutive adventure bike. And while many American riders might scoff at a Chinese motorcycle, look closer and you'll see a company that makes over a million bikes per year and employs 18,000 people. Hardly a barnyard operation. The bike also comes with a two year unlimited mile warranty, so should anything break, you're covered. The same can't be said for a used SV650 or an RVF400. The RX3 will certainly yield some snickering from purist motorcyclists, but if you're on a budget and you just want to get rolling on a bike that can theoretically go anywhere, it's hard to pass on the RX3. The CBR 250RR, and we're back to sweet smaller displacement 90s sport bikes. While Honda recently released the new CBR 250RR, which is the spiritual successor to the small displacement sport bike throne, the screaming 250 of the 90s is the real deal. The CBR 250RR is the ideal solution for the beginner who wants nothing except that sweet sound of an inline four cylinder engine, but also wants to comply with learner restricted licenses, or just wants something that's a little lower power than a 600. A 250cc inline four that revs to over 16,000 RPM sounds crazy. Listen here. <laughs> CBR 250RR can be had for anywhere between two and four grand depending on how nice it is, which falls right into the sweet spot for beginners to purchase one. However, be advised US viewers, these bikes are crazy hard to find here stateside, but for international viewers, scour your local listing and see if there's any for sale. With 45 horsepower, they're learner approved and will get you tons of compliments for their rarity and uniqueness. Much like the RVF 400, the CBR 250RR falls into that sweet spot of the 90s perfect sport bike ergonomics. 
Economics package. The Kawasaki Versus 650. I feel like the Versus is a really underappreciated solid starter bike. With excellent ergonomics for touring and commuting, a punchy 650cc parallel twin, it's basically the practical cousin to the Ninja 650. And while you can pick these up new for close to 8500 out the door, I'd advise checking out the used market to see where these can be had for around 4 or 5 grand all day. Older people looking for something to really grow into and ride for a long time should check out the Versus. You can pretty much do whatever you want with this bike. You can commute to work, ride on the weekends, take trips with it, help, try out a track day, why not do jumps with it? Alright, let's not get too crazy. The Versus is a great bike for those looking to blend into the crowd a bit more. Sport bikes can be pretty flashy and if you're not into the idea of attracting attention, the Versus is a great choice. The 650 class is great too for its much better low down torque than the 300 or even a 600cc Super Sport, meaning when you take off from a light and turn that throttle a little bit heavier than usual, you get that nice surge of power. The Versus is a sweet bike even if it is a bit ugly. The GS500. All right, I bet you guys are sleeping on the GS500. Yes, I know, it's Suzuki's red-headed stepchild of a middleweight bike. Yes, I realize it's not fast. Yes, I'm aware the suspension looks like it was built about 300 years ago, but that's not the point. The GS500 is arguably one of the finest entry-level bikes due to its price, availability, and overall parts bin nature. You can get these on Craigslist for under $1,500 all day, because guess what? Nobody wants them. Nobody believes in them, but you do. You see the potential in that little GS500. Because guess what? This is a GS500, and so is this, and this. The GS500 is a bike that was made for 20 years, basically the exact same way. It is a parallel twin making about 50 horsepower, which, having ridden one of these, seems incredibly off to you, but since they're so easy to work on, make sure you tweak it and get it running right. Endless modding capabilities and a super simple bike make this, in my humble opinion, one of the best bikes to get as an absolute nugget beginner bike. Seriously. Buy one, learn on it, and treat it like a disposable paper towel. Which, by the way, should totally not flush down the toilet. I read this article about how there's this thing called a fatberg in London and their sewers, which is basically an amalgamation of people's unflushable garbage that they decided to flush down the toilet anyways. Don't flush your GS500 down the toilet, my dudes. The Suzuki Boulevard M50. Yes, Cruiser Bros, I hear you. I'm caving to your desires. Skip the overpriced Harley Sportsters and check this bad boy out. The Suzuki M50 is an 805cc V-twin cruiser that makes way more sense than you might imagine. Suzuki's been cranking these out since 2005, and they're surprisingly easy to work on, easy to maintain, and can look awesome. With water cooling, which many Harleys don't have, and some pretty sweet suspension components for a cruiser, the M50 should be high on your list if sport bikes, ADVs, and cafe bikes aren't your thing. And if that's you, seriously, why are none of those things your thing? There's lots of different kinds of bikes out there. You should look at them. The M50 can be had for as little as three grand since the cruiser market is so heavily saturated with Harleys that cost over 20 grand in measure horsepower and freedom units. With a little TLC, you can have a badass cruiser that most people would mistake for a $15,000 bike. Check out what the M50 can look like. The Suzuki Boulevard is a sweet cruiser that should definitely get more credit as an awesome beginner bike for those looking to ride easy and smooth. The TUX 250X. I realize a lot of people might be saying, wow, three Suzukis on this list. This dude must love Suzukis, but I actually don't even like the brand that much. You guys know I'm a Triumph and Yamaha snob. Anyways, the TU 250X is a surprisingly sweet little bike that's a lot more than the sum of its parts. It's in production in the US since 2009, the TU250X can satisfy the cool bike desires of your cafe dreams but at an incredibly affordable price point. The TU250X is a JDM looking 250cc single cylinder learner bike that in Suzuki's words was built for the daily and casual ride. Coming in brand new for under 4500 bucks, the TU250X is a pretty ridiculous bargain. The other cool thing, much like the GS500, you can do a few choice mods and absolutely transform the way this bike looks. Check out these TU250Xs. If you want a bike that's going to turn heads, you should definitely check out the TU250X. If you're not into the whole sport bike, cruiser, ADV, dual sport, oh Jesus Christ, what the hell are you into then? Thanks for checking out this video guys, if you found it useful, even a little, leave a thumbs up, it really helps with the video's rankings on YouTube. If you're not a subscriber, consider giving a sub to the channel, I post up videos every week and I try to keep it light and fun and usually about bikes. Thanks again and I'll catch you guys next time.